It's afternoon. I brought my easel and pastels out into the garden to work on a painting. I've set up some objects on the table in front of the door, including a vase of some lilacs which have come into flower and a dressing gown on the right-hand chair. I'm working on salmon coloured pastel mat card, which will give a warmth to the overall image. I start by drawing a dominant geometric lines, the door, the table, the window, the chairs. Once I'm happy with their position, I choose my pastels and begin blocking in. Let's go back and have a look at the drawing. Uh, I recommend really this is a good time to work from life rather than from a photo. Practice in a sketchbook if you're unsure. Use a viewfinder if it helps you to frame your subject. So having decided more or less on the position of my doorway here, I wanted to make sure that the lilacs and the dark vase cut right into that shape in order to unify the foreground and the background. The position of this window and where I cut the picture plane here seemed to me important. The position of the chairs. So th these kind of small sketches can be worked on in your sketchbook first. And once you're happy with that composition, let's go into the mathematical part of it. So a good way to start the actual pastel is having done your compositional sketch, look at the proportions. If I place my pencil here and I actually measure this space and I come up and I look here, that's a nice straightforward proportion. I can see that this, this space equals this space. I can then put those marks down on my pastel paper. The table might be something that many people have difficulty with. It's often surprising. We know that that is a round table and yet it's worth spending just a minute to have a look at the actual proportions of that table in terms of perspective. The vertical length equals here one, two, two and a half, slightly more of the horizontal. You can relate this too to the doorway coming down. Where does it position in relation to the table? Spend a little bit of time making these kind of marks just to give yourself a geometrical structure to your pastel before you start. As I work progressively on the painting, I'm beginning to build up tones. The open doorway is very dark and dominant, and I can see interesting shapes happening inside the room. I'm varying colour to add richness to those darks. Choosing the right coloured pastel takes much of my time at this stage. I'm thinking mainly about tonal balance and start by blocking in the darkest and lightest masses, ignoring detail. In terms of colour, I'm choosing basically warm or cool darks and lights. After using a pastel, I put it to one side and in this way I gradually build up my palette and I know to reuse those colours whenever possible. I know the violet blue of the lilacs is going to play a key role and so I'm including that colour elsewhere in order to create all over harmony. When I'm choosing colour, I try each one on the side of the paper before actually applying it. Even in the darks though, I'm still working lightly. I want the colour of the pastel card to be visible. This is still an underpainting. I know there's going to be changing shadows cast on the wall as the sun moves around behind the tree and this will give a greater dynamism to the composition. I'm anticipating this as I work. Confronting a new subject like this for the first time is both exciting and nerve-wracking. The light moves as I watch and I'm still looking for a way to balance the image. I'm sketching and exploring the possibilities. Certain areas begin to cause me problems. The light on the ground, for instance, in front of the door. I need to separate it either in tone or in colour from the table, give more spatial depth. I'm also concerned about the awkward relationship of the table to the dressing gown. But I know the shadows will give another dimension to these shapes as they change. A pastel's more versatile if the paper surrounding it is removed. The side of the baton as well as the tip gives dynamism to the mark making. 
The branch shadows are falling on the wall now, sweeping across the stone and creating fluid lines. I'm trying to incorporate the movement and tie it into the overall composition of the picture. I have to work very fast as the shapes are changing. There's definitely something about the heaviness of the dressing gown that's bothering me. I think about echoing the shadow lines by working on the drapery, but maybe I'll just change the dressing gown for something more transparent. On this mid-tone paper, working on the shadows is as much about the in-between light shapes as the positive dark ones. I'm roughly putting in the dominant shadow shapes using just one grey-blue colour. I have to simplify. I can work in various colours in more detail later. We can never have enough pastels, but I believe it's important to have a range of light spectrum colours, at least yellow, pink and blue. By mixing and cross-hatching these, you can create a far more vibrant light than a white pastel. So this is day two. I decided to change the pedestal and mortar on the table for a darker shape to balance the open doorway. It can take many goes sometimes to find the right object, but I eventually settled on this teapot. I thought it worked well sitting next to the tall blue vase, and I liked its reflective surface. I got rid of the apples on the table too, their colour was irrelevant to the rest of the picture, and I changed the dressing gown for a pinker, more transparent shirt with softer drapes. Sometimes these decisions are dictated by the painting they're difficult to make in advance. As my work is still sketched in, it isn't difficult to work right over the top. And this is one thing I really appreciate about pastel as a technique. Working on this second session is much easier. Having watched the changing light yesterday, I've decided to deal with the problem of separating the table from the ground behind by adding warmer colours into the grass and paving, as well as by lightening the tabletop. Bringing more yellows and golds into the picture gives me the opportunity to play with them in the light stonework on the house too. As the light passes through the branches of the tree, the intensity of darkness varies. My application of the pastel stick should mimic this. I like to vary the way I'm drawing, pushing the pastel stick as well as stroking with it. I'm trying to mimic the actual way the shadows fall on the stone. I feel as if the picture is beginning to come together now. I'm starting to work in more detail. In order to avoid smudging the pastel, I rest my hand on the easel to support my right arm as I draw. I know the picture isn't finished, but I've got to the point where I'm concerned not to overdo the detail. It's so tempting sometimes to become seduced into wanting to explain everything and throw out the balance of the image as a whole. I'm happy with the general dark mass at the bottom left hand side of the picture and I'm prolonging the decision about whether to work more on the foreground chair. Now that I'm satisfied with the lighter drapery of the shirt, I'm enjoying working round it and I'm adding a block of ivy creeping up the wall to give another vertical on the right hand side of the picture. My third and last session this afternoon. By now the overall aesthetic of the picture is more important to me than trying to achieve realism. I won't continue chasing the shadows this afternoon. My concern is consolidating the painting so there's balance and an internal rhythm. 
If you look closely at the way the pastel has been applied, it's possible to see that the colour of the paper is still visible. It's far from being saturated. I feel a common mistake with beginners is often to work too heavily too early on so that colours become muddy. The salmon colour of the paper also serves to give me a unity to the colour throughout the work. In the shadow and light on the wall, you can see here the variety of colours I've used and also the gestural movements. As I stand back and look at what I've done up to this point, it occurs to me that the teapot is, is a central focus in the picture. I hope that the shadows on the wall to the right hand side, sweeping down to join it, help to avoid a static composition. I'm satisfied that it balances, however, the dark of the doorway. The doors and the inside of the house alter enormously depending on the light. Sometimes the window on the other side of the room is very much in evidence. At other times it's the reflections of the garden on the glass which dominate. Both are interesting, but at this stage of the picture, the artist needs to choose what to leave out as well as what to put in. To break the symmetry, I've decided to add more cool grey blues into the left hand side of the wall. I'm lightly cross hatching over the existing colours. Dull, light colours really don't give an adequate impression of the brightness of the scene. I really want to incorporate some gold orange tints, but it's hard to find the right pastel. Once I'm satisfied with the colour, I incorporate touches working over the picture. I enjoy the way that colour can be mixed by cross-hatching. As pastelists, we don't have a way to mix colour on the palette. If we mix, it needs to be done on the picture. Continuing to respect the darkness or lightness of an area, I can alter the colour slightly by adding blues into mauve, for example, or gold into green. As I'm pushing orange as a colour into the sunlit areas, I also want to exaggerate the cool blues. I'm lightly cross-hatching across the vertical of the tablecloth. My picture is close to completion. I know now how I want it to look. Without thinking about it too much, it occurs to me that I need a dark shape on the table and invent another coffee cup. Just a dark shape above the top of the foreground chair. A dark mid-toned brown pastel allows me to slightly tone down the windows on the other side of the room. It remains as an important feature, but is subtle and distant. This same pastel, being neutral and also harmonious with my other colour choices, can be used to add in drawing details elsewhere. Like most artists, I find it so difficult to know when a picture is finished. The light has changed now, and I can see nothing in the picture which strikes me as discordant. I'm ready to stop. So I think I'll call that a day. In this video, I wanted to take you through my pastel technique in three sessions of roughly two hours each. Without a doubt, in a week or two, I'll probably be in the studio and see something that needs tweaking or changing. That nearly always happens. But for the minute, this is where I've got to. I hope you've enjoyed the video. My next videos will be exploring other subjects and techniques in pastel painting. Monochrome, colour mixing, landscape, portrait and more. Each video that I produce will be linked to an article on my blog giving more information on the technique and materials. I hope that you may be interested in following along and using my demonstration as a starting point for your own pastoral work. I'm also offering the possibility of online individual tuition. Please look at my blog for more details. Thank you. If you have any questions you can leave a comment and I'll try to reply to everyone.